sponsorship is one of the reasons why we get to continue to do sport fishing on the fly. Today we're going to look at one of our longtime sponsors, Outcast. We're joined today by Al Bellhumor, who is a rep for Outcast, as well as Brian Chan, who really needs no introduction. And we have a little special something for Mr. Chan, and that's today, as we take you sport fishing on the fly. <music> Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by G. Loomis. Quality graphite fly rods. You will like what you feel. And by Islander Reels. High performance precision fly reels. Canadian made. And by Outcast. Makers of well designed, well constructed pontoon boats. Let me introduce you to Al Bell Humor. Al's a manufacturer's rep for fishing equipment, including a couple of our sponsors. We've got Mustad Hooks, we've got these babies right here, the Outcast pontoon boats, and they're great. And what's so good about pontoon boats? Well, pontoon boats, Grant, are your, uh, your own portable fishing machine. They are, aren't they? You get to pack a lot of gear on them and, and get to where you want to go quickly. But you know, right now, we're going to be fishing with Brian Chan today here at Douglas Lake Ranch, and he and Don are standing by, and they're going to tell us a little bit about how we can approach today's lake, including some shrimp fishing, I think. Mm, sounds great. Well, Brian, your favorite time of year, mid-September, and I know how much you love to fish shrimp. Do we have to, Don? <laughs> well, you know, we might have to. We don't know yet. What are you thinking? Well, it is middle of September and on, you know, and the water's cooling down, clearing up. Fish are getting hungry, getting ready for fall. So it should be shrimp and leeches and maybe some baby damsel fly nymphs. Right on. Well, it sounds pretty good. I'm going to play it by ear and I'm going to wait till I get out there and see how it goes. See what happens. I'm ready to try shrimp today. Right off the bat, well, well you know, the funny thing is we kind of set Brian up today. We've, uh, we've told him it's all about shrimp and leeches. Well, Brian's in there right in the bay right now with Al working a shrimp real hard. And we know how much he hates to work shrimp. Well, yesterday we had the old uh, insight. We were out for a day extra. We knew they were taking chronomids and actually big bombers. So we've come out here with our big black bomber, first cast into a nice one. And we're anchored in about 20 feet like we, oh, like we were yesterday. And they're all just feeding on these big black bombers and I'll show you the fly in a minute. Oh gee, oh man, good fighting fish. Oh, and I can see Brian, he's, he's seen we're into a fish and he's not stupid, pretty smart guy. He's already up anchored and he's kicking out here. <laughs> so I think we'll let him in on the on the scoop once he gets out here. But let's show you this fish first. Oh, look at the size of this guy. Oh, big guy into the net. Oh, there's a dandy fish. Got the chronomid just stuck in his top lip. Let's get that out. There it is. And let's get this guy going here. Oh, there he is there. Isn't that a beautiful fish? Let's get him in there and get him revived. want to go. He's gave me a good fight. Make sure he's getting ready before we let him go. Oh, and there he goes. And see here comes Mr. Chan. I think he's going to come down and find out what we're using. I think we'll enlighten him when he gets here though. Well have you looked on the water when you came out? Did you look around? Yeah. Well what would you see? Shrimp. What else? <laughs> There's chronomids. Exactly, your favorite. You're the king, right? You're not fishing chronomids, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? 
we kind of say, yep, oh, you, I hope you brought your chronomid box. Yeah. Excellent, I knew the chronomid king. Of course, he's going to bring it yesterday. There's out some here. bombers here. Big bombers were coming off. We were doing this wet line technique straight down and nailing them. A fish every 30 seconds. It was a joke. No shrimp. I know how much you like to fish <laughs> shrimp. <laughs> You're mean. We set Brian up, of course, with the shrimp <laughs> leeches, but it's going to be chronomids. So imagine you get to fish chronomids all day today. Oh. It was awesome yesterday. I mean, it went steady. So hopefully it's the same today. This is good. So I knew you'd be happy. <laughs> you know, we called him up last night. Grant was talking to him. He says, uh, shrimp and leeches really hot. And Brian, the comment was, oh, great. <laughs> So okay, now you're now happy. I'm happy. Good. Now I'm you're happy. happy. So now we're going to set up out here. This is where we're at. We're in about 25 to 30 feet. It was really good, and we'll we'll try it out. But I knew you'd be happy. I'm really happy. <laughs> this guy just ripped it. Hammered it pretty hard. Again, just fishing straight down about 20 feet. Full sinking line, and it's where the fish are moving right now. They haven't really moved in yet, so we decided to start out a little bit deeper. Again, we're going to be fishing different patterns today. We're gonna to see what works the best. So we'll try some, some shrimp, some leeches, some chronomids. We'll try everything and see what's producing. Oh boy. <laughs> and you have to let the fish kind of swing you around here. It's just the way it is. Okay, let's get this guy in. Boy, that's a nice one. Oh, yeah, he fills the net. That's a 24 inch net. <laughs> and it is full. There's a little, whoa, little shrimp pattern right in the corner of his mouth. Pop that out. There he is here. Give everybody a good look. But there he is. Isn't that a beautiful fish? Oh, nice and healthy, nice and thick. Probably three to four pounds. And there he goes. Just want to swim away. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good start to the day. See how it goes. Right now we're at about 20 feet. We've noticed that through the day they seem to progress and move in a little bit shallower and then they slide out again. So we'll try to follow them around and show you what we're using. But it's time to get into another fish. like a nice fish. Well, a fish. I caught a fish though. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't on a shrimp. <laughs> it wasn't on a shrimp. What did you get them on? I got them on a leech. Excellent. They're, the fish are in these channels now. It's pre getting pretty late in the fall and you can usually do pretty good on a um, dry line or with an indicator or without an indicator with a leech. Oh, excellent. So as you're doing the catatonic leech approach. That's right. Just letting it sit. Just letting it sit, giving it the odd twitch and hopefully she'll go down. Excellent. Well, let's show everybody your fish. Yeah, well, anyway, let's guy go. There you go. Beautiful fall rainbow. And there he goes. So, how about the comfort level in the outcast? I see you've got the uh, 800 here. How's your comfort level in here? You have a nice snooze in here. Besides not having your flippers. <laughs> what is that all about? I get too many toys at home and I <laughs> couldn't find them. <laughs> you couldn't find them all. You know what, we'll probably head into shore and get you a spare set maybe, if you behave. How Don't about, catch too many fish. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well I'm gonna try that catatonic leech approach. Well, sometimes it's good to have an indicator out there to attract the fish, because this fish, not the most intel intelligent fish out there. He came up, rose on my indicator. <laughs> Must have saw my chronomid on the way back down and took it. <laughs> I guess whatever it takes. Yeah, he's going towards my other line. Come on, over here. Of course, when you got two lines out, the fish wants to go towards the other line. Cause your grief. Okay. Yeah, that's the other problem with these long leaders. 
We got a, quite a long leader out there. Ah, and he's slowly coming up. I gotta get him like, oh good, I got him in the net. Perfect. All right, still a little fresh. Well, that's okay. Let's get this guy out. So, oh, I already flicked the hook. Caught him in the Here he's there, a little guy. But hey, it's all right, the fish is a fish. Going. And there he goes. retriever are you using? Slow up that I got a bit of a wind drift going there. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of an interesting technique here, isn't it? Yeah. Move up in the shallows and let it drift along. Wow, nice fish. Joy's a fish in the uh, private waters too, isn't it? Yeah. And it's kind of nice. Like There was a couple people out here earlier. I don't see anybody out here right now. Not a soul. And we've moved up into these channels because Brian said channels are the place to be because this fall the fish are moving in there. You bet. Oh, nice fish. That's quite the neat little net you got there too. Yeah, it works pretty good. Sometimes it could be. It, sometimes it could be a little bit bigger though. It could be a little underpowered here today. Yes, that's right. <laughs> now you got these long leaders, you know. Wow, what a little football. You bet. That's a beauty. <laughs> Excellent. Let's see the color of that leech too. Oh, nice a little beadhead leech. You bet. Green body, some red on it. Beautiful fish. Nice, is right. Let me move your net out of the road for you. Sure. Excellent. Oh, good job. I had one other hit so far today. That was on the little disco leech. First time I cast it out, I had it out for. Oh, 20 seconds, picked up a fish. And this guy thought he was gonna get me in the weed, so I'm glad I got him. Anyway, you come in here, buddy, and I'll get all that stuff off of you. Whoa, just windy and blowing to beat the band-aid. Makes it a little tough. Not so tough for fishing, but it makes it tough for filming. We got how right. This guy is wrapped up. Actually, there's the, the leash, I'll show you what I went to because it worked good. Get all the extra cabbage off this guy. And you know, when people use the outcast boats or any pontoon boat for that matter, this is the hardest part to get used to. Be comfortable leaning over in front, knowing that if you mess up, you're gonna go in the drink. But of course, if you do fall forward, just put your elbows out, you catch on. Oh, you got your flippers in front of you. It's not a big deal. What's gonna happen though, as soon as I stop kicking here, I'm gonna turn sideways. It's gonna make it tough to release this guy. Anyway. There he is. Nice uh, male. Pretty typical size, maybe a little bit on the smaller side even. And there he goes. Awesome. That's another good way to do it too. If you aren't comfortable leaning forward, just lean over the side. You can do all your work from the side. The nice thing is, I picked that guy off way up in that channel up there. Being in these pontoon boats, I'm gonna be fishing again in about a minute. Roll my way back up there. See how pull it? Pull it right back. Jeez. Pull it right out of my hands. 
Because I mean, I am moving it pretty fast. It's not a, it's not even a hand twist retrieve. It's a little quicker than that. Well, in the weed. So you always got to pull it through those weed. You want to just be touching the tops of the weeds and stuff. There it. Oh, you see that? <laughs> Pulled it right in my hand again. Did he snap me? He broke me off. He broke me off. Darn it! Oh, just being steady action. As soon as that sun comes out, got a big black leech on, and they are just pounding it in this one zone. And look at that. Took everything. Oh well, time to retie. <laughs> I'm going to tie you today is called the seal leech. Now of course the most important ingredient in this fly is the seal fur and I really like two colors, the claret and the purple. But make sure you have these materials ready before you start this fly. To start the fly off, I've put my small copper cone onto the hook. And what I'm going to do is build up a little bit of a, a head of thread at the eyelid of the hook. And what I want to do is just build enough thread where my cone will go over this thread and sit nice and tight. I don't want that, that cone moving around on the hook. So I'm going to build up a little bit of thread, just enough to make that cone sit nice and easy. So it's nice and solid on the eyelid of the hook and then whip finish off the thread. After I've tied in my, my cone nice and solid at the eyelet of the hook, I'm going to wrap my thread back and form a good base layer. I've taken some Claret Marabou and I'm going to measure it up in the length of the hook and tie this in for the tail. And again, don't make your tails too thick. Keep them nice and sparse. So they got some nice movement in the water. Take two strands of my pearl crystal flash and we'll just pull them up onto the thread and tie them in at the top of the tail. Just add some highlights into the tail and cut them the length of the tail. For the next step I'm actually going to take my two different seal furs. I've got a claret color and I've got a purple color and I'm actually going to take a dubbing block and create a dubbing loop using the dubbing block. Another way you can do it is actually doing a dubbing loop on your thread and tying it in this way if you don't have a dubbing block. But we're going to use a dubbing block and I'm actually going to use some red wire, some medium red wire and let's proceed and tie in a dubbing loop or dubbing brush as it's called. When you're making your dubbing loops and your dubbing brushes and especially when you're mixing two different colors, I like to take one color at a time and put it through in certain areas on the block and then take the next color and add to it and just keep blending both colors back and forth till you get the right amount of material for the dubbing brush. Now that we've created our nice dubbing brush, we're going to tie it in at the rear of the hook and then we'll slowly wrap forward to form the body and you'll see after we pick out the body how well the seal fur shines and really forms a beautiful body for a leech. So we'll just wrap it forward keeping it fairly thin getting a little fuller as we get towards the head and tie off right at the back of the cone. Two steps left in the fly. We're actually going to take our whip finisher and I want to finish right behind the cone. So our thread's nice and finished off there. Then we're going to take our dubbing picker and really pick out this seal for a good. Pick it back. Pull it back to form a leech body. And you'll see that that red wire underneath really stands out. And that's the most important thing. Picking out the seal fur so that you got lots of real hairy look to it and that you can actually see that red wire underneath shine through. 
There's a few ingredients that make this pattern special. You have the crystal flash off the tail. You've also got the claret marabou. But really what makes it special is the seal fur. That combination of the purple and the claret seal fur really makes this fly shine. As you can see, it's just blowing big time up here. And you know, Brian suggested that this time of year you really do get shrimp and leeches. He wasn't kidding, tournament action is not usually what we get. So his suggestion is to go up into the shallow. So I think once we get this fish in, that's exactly what we're gonna do. <laughs> you know what it seems like too, the smaller the fish, the better the fight. Because this guy is not, not nearly as big as anything we've caught. Yet, you get the great scrap with him. So for recommended setup today, coming up here to Douglas Lake Ranch, best thing to have is at least a six weight rod. And you probably want two line setups. You want your dry line for fishing the chronomid with the indicator, and also for fishing the leeches and the shrimp when you get up into the shallows. And you definitely want a wet line because we're out at 20 feet and pretty typical where the, the leeches are, are in this 20 foot depth and they, they actually do a thing here they call rip and strip it. And that's where they cast out as much line as they can, let it sit to the bottom and then strip it in as fast as you can. We haven't tried that method yet because they've been on coronamids. Okay, guy yeah, looks like it's ready to come in. Oh, this wind is just so, so tough. Look at that, eh? That is just one obese little fish. I wonder they fight so good. Big bomber chronomid. Unhook them. There it is there. The weed on it. Now, I'm gonna, this is gonna be challenging here. There, do the deal with release there. That's short, look how fat he is though. Well, ready to go. Off he goes. Well, you know what? It's a lot less windy in there, and Brian's already in there, so I think time to make the move and get out of the wind and see if we can get some on some shrimp and leeches. Well, Brian, I hope you don't mind being set up today. Well, you know, I think I deserved a little bit of it after that fishing trip last fall. <laughs> well, you caught a fish and a shrimp today. I, I did today, and I made sure Don knew it. <laughs> uh, Stony Lake. I don't know, it's getting better and better. Fishing oh, it's is getting bigger over the years. Some beautiful fish today, well conditioned. Uh, things look great for next year. Right on. You get a chance to come out, take care, conserve the waters like they do here, do a great job, and like Brian does wherever he looks after the waters, and we're really thankful for that. See you next time when we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport fishing on the fly is brought to you by G. Loomis. Quality graphite fly rods. You will like what you feel. And by Islander Reels. High performance precision fly reels, Canadian made. And by Superfly, for all your fly tying and fishing needs.